Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It's Saturday, the 25th of September, 2021. Hope you're having a good weekend. Let's take a look at what's going on out in the tropics. You know what the big story is. It is Hurricane Sam, probably knocking on the door of Category 4 right now. We'll see at the 5 o'clock update. I'll show you why I think that in just a minute. And then we have some other traffic sitting out here over the west parts of the western part of the basin, central, western Atlantic, whatever. Um, not really impacting land, at least nothing significantly. This is what was very short-lived subtropical storm Teresa. This is just some other feature that's out there. The Atlantic just really wants to crank stuff out right now. And uh, we're going to see a very busy end to September, well on into October. Once we get into October, I think this area right through here is going to be legit busy as well. And then probably going to see a, a lot of activity up in the subtropics October and into November, and even more activity coming off Africa here over the next couple of weeks or so. And we can see that reflected in the five day outlook. More activity there. We're going to use up the list of names, I do believe, and we will go into the auxiliary list, which begins with Adria, A D R I A. We're not far from it. I think it's almost a shoe in that that will happen. Uh, but we have a lot of stuff to talk about right now, and Sam sort of leads the way on that. Here's our track map from the interactive tracking map off the Hurricane Track Insider site. And you can see that uh, it's forecast to move comfortably uh, far away enough from the leeward islands down here, the northeastern leewards, to not pose any direct impacts. They're not even in the cone of uncertainty, so to speak. And so that's really good news there. It'll be a small enough hurricane overall, not one of these giant ones, that even the periphery edges of it shouldn't warrant any major concerns for our friends in the islands. One thing to note, the uh, the Euro, which we used to put a lot of stock into because it, I mean, people used to call it the King Euro. Let's see what the King Euro says. But these last couple of years, it has not done a very good job overall, at least in the tropical cyclone side of things. I don't keep up with how it does at the 500 millibar level and all the skill score stuff. I just look at what it's been doing with the tropical cyclones, and I vividly remember as an example last year with Laura, like two to three days out, the ensemble mean of the Euro was taking it in darn near Houston, Texas. GFS was north and east of there, closer to Sabine Pass and Lake Charles, and that's actually what happened. And I could try to cite other examples, but this one here with Sam, you remember the Euro has been more weak with Sam, and it's been on the more southern trajectory with Sam because it had a weaker cyclone. And so the reason behind that is when these uh, cyclones, these tropical cyclones are deeper in the atmosphere, they feel sort of the full effect of the steering layers and not just the east to west trades that go through here. Uh, the larger they are, they're like a boat. You know, I do these analogies a lot. These are like boats. You know, you got a little sunfish out there. You're going to need some pretty good wind to carry it along at the surface. You got one of those massive million dollar sailboats that has a huge mast and a gigantic sail and one of those big spinnakers on it or whatever, you know, that really catches whatever wind there is and that boat can move along. And that's what happens when these hurricanes develop real deep into the atmosphere and they kind of fill up the atmosphere. They feel those deeper layer steering areas as opposed to just sort of the lower levels, which are typically east to west across the trades, you know, the deep tropics is generally east to west. And the Euro just didn't do a good job thinking that uh, that Sam was going to be as intense as it, as it is now. The GFS and the GFS related models, the H Wharf and the H Mon, come on, trying to get me to go away there. They did a really good job at depicting this. And so here we are. It's a category three as of the 11 o'clock advisory. It's probably a four now. And it should move comfortably, like I said, to the north and east of the islands. It will generate swells. Do not discount that. Those swells will come out and eventually impact uh, a huge area. That's going to be coming up and that's something we need to talk about eventually uh, down the road. So here's the visible satellite animation courtesy of the weathernerds.org site. Tropical tidbits having trouble. Uh, I was having trouble last week, having trouble again today with connectivity issues. So we're using the Weather Nerd site. We always appreciate uh, people like Dr. Cowan and his site and the folks behind Weather Nerds and others that are out there that make this stuff readily available for free. Um, but sometimes it has connectivity issues and it's good to have backup sources. 
that we can go to. And so here you go. There's that central dense overcast, the CDO, very small area overall, compact little hurricane, but a very intense eye wall in there. And uh, let's zoom in on this just a little bit. Really neat to see here. Very small area of hurricane force winds around this, but intense. Absolutely. Look at all that lightning in the middle of the day. Lightning in the eye wall there showing a lot of intense motion and instability. Uh, ice crystals up there that help to create that, that lightning. That's why you get lightning. The differential uh, charges between the ice crystals in the upper parts of the atmosphere and down at the surface and elsewhere in the cloud structure. When you see lightning in the core like that, that's an indication of some serious intensification going on. And this is probably knocking on the door of 130, 140 miles per hour. Look at the infrared. This is also a real telltale sign here. The very deep convection in the atmosphere, that gray color there, really pushing way, way, way up in the atmosphere here at the upper end of the scale. Very cold cloud tops there because Sam is pushing those thunderstorms up up against the stratosphere. That's how high up these are going, and that helps to generate this tremendous temper dif temperature differential. The eye is warming on the outside of it and the top of the thunderstorms there. It's very cold, and so you have this big contrast in temperature. You've got this massive uh, release of latent heat down there through the condensation process of all that deep convection, and it is filling itself out into the atmosphere, feeling a little bit more of the deep layer flow that is steering it more towards the northwest uh, and west-northwest rather than due west towards the islands. So in this case, the intensity is helping to sort of dictate the steering to some degree. So again, the tropical tidbit site was not working earlier. I haven't checked it lately, so I'm assuming it's still not working uh, properly. Very slow to load, so we'll use weather nerds for right now. And this is the 12Z GFS, and it's about 850 millibars in the atmosphere. And there's our system right there. There's SAM, and uh, you also have the outline of the different areas of uh, pressure fields through here, some troughing over here. And uh, there's what was Teresa, a little bit of ridging just to the north of SAM, but it's not much. So that's why SAM isn't just hauling it across the deep tropics. That's another reason why, too. There's just not a lot of deep layer ridging out here. There's just enough to keep it from moving you know, northwest and due north right now. So let's put this loop into motion, and you can see what happens over the next few days. I ran it out to five days. We're just going to look at five days for right now. And it ends up, again, at a comfortable margin to the north and east uh, of Puerto Rico, of the Virgin Islands and elsewhere, uh, Barbuda, St. Bart's, you name it. Not another Irma, not happening this time. There's the big old area of high pressure dominating a good deal of the northeast Atlantic, troughing developing, uh, upper level low, et cetera, the heights falling up here. And this is literally like, you know, a ball headed downhill. This is going to be moving, except this is moving north, but it's going to gravitate towards that. That's where this is headed. This area of low pressure will head towards another area of least resistance where there's not as much high pressure. And again, it's so easy to understand this, at least I can. I'll try to present it to you. If you could stretch all of this out and it covered all the way around like this, this big old area of high pressure, and this wasn't here, uh, you know what I mean? If I could just color all this in, if this was just all red and the darker colors of red, Sam would be moving west northwest closer to the islands and it would be a real problem for the United States. But that's not the case. We have eroded the western part of that Atlantic Ridge. There's just a little bit of ridging through here, uh, but once that erodes through after day five, and it does, Sam is able to escape up into the North Atlantic up here. Uh, definitely got to watch it up in the Canadian Maritimes from Nova Scotia to Newfoundland. Not 100% certain that it won't impact New England, you know, but I'm 95% certain. Uh, I mean, these upper level lows, whatever, these cutoff lows can do some weird things, but, you know, Bermuda, which sits right in here, you got to watch it there, of course. Could be a close call for Bermuda, in fact. Uh, and then the Canadian Maritimes from there uh, down the road, seven, eight, nine days, something like that. We have to watch it. And then you, you see what else is happening. More systems developing in the main development region, and then way beyond this time frame, we got to start watching the Caribbean. 
lots and lots of signals out there, including just looking at the overall pattern, this very warm water temperature profile in the Atlantic Basin here, warm across the main development region where SAM is currently located right in here, through the Caribbean, the western Atlantic's warm, most of the Gulf is except the extreme northern Gulf, thank goodness, cool it off there, let's just protect Louisiana, uh, shall we? And Mississippi too for that matter. Um, seriously, those colder anomalies, that is a very good signal to see for our good friends up there in Cajun country because you've had enough and I don't laugh, you know, you know, I mean, it's one of those laughs of despair and like, oh, you guys have certainly seen enough. But this area of the Atlantic Basin, uh, we really have to watch this as we get into October. Some of the stuff I've been reading over at Storm 2K, I mention them very often, storm2k.org. Uh, again, it's just neat to be able to read through it what the different very smart people that know what they're looking for, they're not just throwing mud out there, they're not throwing other whatever, right, that, to, to generate controversy, where somebody will go put a 10-day forecast on Twitter or Facebook to create 10,000 likes and shares with no context. No, 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 Storm 2K is fantastic because it's full of context to understand the big picture, and I like to read that. I like to read what people are saying and develop a consensus here, and that consensus is, as we get into the month of October, the Western Caribbean, especially pretty much the Southwest Atlantic, going to be open for business as a much more favorable pattern sets up. The European weeklies are showing this with a more favorable upward motion pattern, the Madden-Julian oscillation itself, I mean, all kinds of stuff that we will get into in more detail on Monday. Let's get through the weekend first, dealing with Sam here these next couple of days, kind of resolve where we think it's going to end up, and then we can start focusing, because we'll be, of course, closer to October as well by that time frame. We only got a few days left here, five days left, and September's done. But I'm telling you, folks, it's not over yet. This area right here concerns me uh, for our friends in the Greater Antilles, the islands down here, of course, and the Florida Peninsula. More major hurricanes affect Florida Peninsular region, Peninsular, <laughs> the Florida Peninsula area, in October than any other month of the hurricane season. It's true. Look it up. It's only by a little bit, but it does count. And, uh, you know, it's coming up. October is almost here. All right. So there you go. Looking a lot better for the east coast of the U.S., the Bahamas, the islands down there of the Caribbean. But again, Bermuda and Atlantic Canada, that region, we got to watch. It's not over yet. And, you know, yes, there's still plenty of time. And the caveat is always there that there's a lot that can happen beyond the uh, five-day time frame. I get that. But this is a pretty solid signal overall from not only the operationals, and eh, the Euro's been the Euro's and just not been doing well, but the Canadian, the GFS, the ensembles, generally indicating that SAM stays out over the Atlantic for the most part. You know, Bermuda, Atlantic, Canada notwithstanding. We'll watch, we'll wait, see how that evolves for our friends there. And we will react and prepare accordingly, I am sure. They, they were well aware of what's happening, trust me. All right, have a great rest of your Saturday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I appreciate it. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon.